RTL Z World Pension Special wordt mede mogelijk gemaakt door Delta Lloyd. Kritisch op het juiste moment. Delta Lloyd. Welkom vanaf de RTL Z Pension Summit. Dit keer met Elsa Fornero, de minister van Sociale Zaken van Italië. De rechterhand van premier Monti en de harde hervormer van de Italiaanse arbeidsmarkt. Ms. Fornero, did the euro crisis hit the Italian pension system? Absolutely, yes. When we started, we had the clear perception that Italy was on the verge of a financial crisis. I was asked by President Mario Monti to enact a pension reform because public expenditure on pensions are very high because of various reasons, but particularly because of aging population. And so I set out to reform in order to reduce expenditure, to calm the financial markets, but also to increase uh, fairness, uh, both within and between generations, that is to reduce uh, privileges uh, and to make treatment more uniform across uh, uh, categories, working categories. So the financial crisis has certainly, uh, certainly been the constraint that has uh, put uh, rapidity in our reform, but the reform was needed and the Italians knew that this was needed and in a way they accepted the sacrifices that were induced by, for example, having retirement ages increased or having indexation of pension benefits with respect to prices reduced. Yes. You said it. The pension age uh, uh, was is going up here in Holland. We have now uh, we are going to uh, 67 pension age, maybe even more because we are all getting older. Um, how's the situation in Italy? 66, 67, or even more? The situation is now 65 for men, for women working in the public sector uh, is the same. For women working in the private sector is now 62 but it will increase uh, reaching uh, um, the age, retirement age of both men and women working in the public sector within a few years. So uh, our retirement ages now are quite high. What is more important is that all retirement ages are indexed to life expectancy. So this means that uh, as life expectancy increases, uh, we will have an automatic increase in retirement ages. So this will continue in future years and so it is possible that we will even surpass the, the Dutch yeah, in this. Yeah. And, and what are the vulnerabilities in the pension system now in Italy in the middle of the crisis? Uh, are people getting enough money or is there their pension going down because the prices are going up? Well, certainly, as I said, uh, uh, the crisis meant uh, reduction in expenditures and this has meant cuts uh, in benefits uh, and uh, benefits now for current retirees and benefits in the future because we changed the pension formula and made it, unfortunately, less generous. Um, when I said that we de-indexed pension, uh, current pensions uh, with respect to uh, price index, uh, that means uh, that there will be a reduction in the purchasing power of pensions. And so it means that people will have uh, uh, less uh, purchasing power and will suffer from this. We tried, because of the severity of the crisis, we could only save the lower pension in order to allow for maintaining the purchasing power of the poorer retirees. Yes. Is it enough or should there be 
uh, more done about the pension system in Italy? Or are, can you withhold no. the crisis now? No, I think uh, the reform that we have enacted is enough to ensure financial sustainability. The system will, will converge to balancing contribution and benefits, and this is good. And so financial markets won't say that Italy has to reduce to further reduce uh, its pension expenditure. I think it also uh, has been uh, important, this reform, in achieving a better balancing of the interest of the various generations, uh, trying to take off the shoulders of the young generation some of the burden that uh, previous legislations had created. That's what people say. Previous generations haven't done enough to reform in Italy, so now the reform is very big and very painful in the pension system. Well, uh, I won't say this because it's not for me to judge a previous reform. What I know is that we had to act uh, with uh, rapidity uh, because of the likelihood of a financial crisis that would have meant uh, losses for retirees, that would have meant losses for families. So it's not that a financial crisis is something uh, uh, foreign to the life of normal people. It's something that will have affected the life of people very much. So what we asked, I mean, to participate in the sacrifice was understood by people. And as I said before, uh, Italian workers accepted the reform, even if with bitterness, but accepted the reform without a general strike. Ms. Elsa Fornero, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Anna-Maria Lussardi vecht tegen financieel analfabetisme. Langlopende verplichtingen, hypotheken, woekerpolissen. Veel mensen hebben financiële beslissingen genomen zonder het door te hebben. Ms. Lussardi, what do people in Western countries know about their financial situation as a whole? Well, what the academic re research shows is that people don't know very much. In fact, they know relatively little. They know little about the financial concept, concepts like interest compounding, inflation, risk diversification, which are critical for pension and pension decision. And they also know relatively little about the current financial crisis or their own pension situation. Yeah, because they, you say they know little about their financial situation as a whole, and specifically about pensions. What do they know about that? Uh, we see very limited awareness of pension and the pension situation and also the potential problem behind the pension system. And even in the Netherlands, I have to say that uh, we have done some research here as well, the awareness of pension is very limited. Which is strange because um, people uh, 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 buy products or do things that have maybe last for 30 years. They have to pay for 30 years for some pension or something like that and they hardly have an idea what they're signing. Yes, I, I think you have indicated a really important problem, which is that we are shifting the responsibility towards saving for their pension and their long-term financial security and offering financial products that can serve those needs, but people are um, awfully you know, un inadequately, in a sense, knowledgeable about the products and also about the concept often that are necessary for making those decisions. Some people say literacy is not needed. Uh, people just need to understand enough to make the decisions. They don't have to, 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 uh, to, to, to see the whole system. Uh, I don't disagree, but uh, when I think of financial literacy, I really think of having the skills, the basic knowledge to make decisions. Uh, in, you know, financial literacy is a bit like driving. You know, you don't need to know the working of the engine. You know, you just need to be able to drive the car. And that's actually what we intend with financial literacy. You know, we don't want people to become financial experts, but we want them to have the basic skills so they can make good decisions but, but about can't themselves. They, can't they say, if I don't understand it, I go to a 
of course, independent. They have to be independent advisor. Uh, yes, but what we have seen is that financial advice is not a substitute for financial literacy. It's a complement. You need to have the basic skill and knowledge to be able to ask the right questions. And also, you need to have the basic skill to follow up on that advice. We have seen in the US very clearly that people don't use financial advisor. And even when they use them, even when it is offered for free, then they, fo they don't follow up on this advice. And in, in Holland, we had the problem that the advisors were not independent. They were selling products for an insurance company or something. Absolutely. So, and on top of it, sometimes it's not obvious that the advisor is the best solution if the advisor are not working working for the best interest of the advisees. So, you know, the market for financial advice is very limited and we have to solve this asymmetric information problem, first of all, that people know a lot more uh, than the one who are asking for advice and that they have to be independent and really have the incentive aligned. So, you know, I really think it is critically important to have those basic skills because they are also helpful uh, to choose the right advisor. Yeah, it's, but it's not a guarantee that people won't make mistakes. Absolutely. In the same way in which, you know, even if we give driving license, it's not that the mistakes are zero. You know, we don't think that financial literacy will prevent any mistake. You know, people are bound to make mistakes in the same way in which when we drive, you know, we are going to have some accident. But what we want to make sure is that the people have those basic skills before they go out on those busy roads. Financial literacy is in Holland not a course in school. Should it it should be. Uh, you know, we live in a 21st century which requires uh, a lot more uh, decisions from uh, the people that you know, we have not made in the past. This is a world that requires new skills. You know, think of all of the new products that we face every day. You know, we need to have these new skills in the same way in which we have added, you know, reading and writing. In fact, I actually argue that financial literacy is like reading and writing, as it was necessary to have those skills to live in the modern society, kind of the industrial society. So we need to have this skill now if you live in a world of individual responsibility. We are an aging society. In, so a lot of institutions won't be able, like in the past, you know, to guarantee our financial well-being. We are but, much but more in charge. If you give a course in school, courses here are usually ended by a test. Should there be a test? Absolutely. Because we want to have an incentive for people to learn. And also we want to make sure that they check how much they learn. You know, I feel that sometimes having a test is very important also to keep overconfidence. But look. if you make a test, you can also fail. What should happen if people fail the test? Well, they should take the course again. And again and again, <laughs> like driving lessons? <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, we or or should, you say, should you say you should not have financial responsibility at this point? If you pass the test, you have. Yeah. No, you know, the problem is we are making too many decisions. You know, I, I, we cannot go for an advisor to decide on how, you know, to have a, whether to have a credit card or whether to have a checking account. We are making too many financial decisions. And actually, the most important decision that people and young people are making in high school is whether or not to invest in education. Right? I mean, in this new world, having skills and having an education is very important. So we want to make sure that people really have the skill, understand you know, all of the investment that they have to make. So I would suggest taking this course again until you get the handle of those skills. And then you are able to make financial decisions. And you are at least equipped to make those decisions, as we have said. You know, before we send you, we send you out in those busy roads, I think we want to check that you have some ability to be on the driving wheel. Yes, Anna Maria, thank you very much. Thank you. Tot zover vanaf de RTL Z World Pension Summit in Amsterdam. Graag tot later. RTL Z World Pension Special wordt mede mogelijk gemaakt door Delta Lloyd. Kritisch op het juiste moment. Delta Lloyd.